Donald Trump's Supreme Court pick, Brett Kavanaugh, is now, of course, being looked into. Reporters are looking over his financial filings, which, of course, he's had to do as a judge. And they have found that his financial situation is very different from previous Supreme Court justice nominations. And most of that has to do with the debt that he's incurred for purposes like sporting events and the fact that when it comes to his assets, Based on what he has disclosed, he doesn't appear to be as wealthy as other judges have in the past. So this is just information that I found interesting I wanted to share with you guys. Now, this information is also verified by Raj Shah, who is a press secretary for Donald Trump. And he has given some explanations in regard to the debt that he had incurred. So the Supreme Court nominee incurred tens of thousands of dollars in debt, credit card debt specifically, for baseball tickets over the past decade and at times reported liabilities that could have exceeded the value of his cash accounts and investment assets. Okay, so Kavanaugh's most recent financial disclosure forms reveal assets between $15,000 and $65,000. That's not a lot. I mean, it's a lot for the average person, but it's not a lot for someone who's no. worked as a federal judge, right? Yeah, that's a tiny amount for a federal judge to have. And there's some, there's two weird things about this story, but let's give you all the details and then I'll tell you what, what I think is weird. Sure, so let's talk a little bit more about the debt. And you're gonna notice that there's a lot of disparity between the amounts that it could be, and it's because these financial disclosure forms, you know, don't require you to give you exact amounts. They give you ranges. So in 2016, Kavanaugh reported having between $60,000 and $200,000 in debt occurred over three credit cards and a personal loan. Each credit card held between $15,000 to $50,000 in debt, and a thrift savings plan loan between $15,000 and $50,000. Now we know that some of that debt was used for um, home improvement purposes, but we don't know exactly how much of that amount. Uh, now the credit card debts uh, were paid off in 2017, according to the filings, uh, which do not require uh, details on the nature of the source of the payments. Also, he lists just two kinds of assets, um, unspecified accounts held with Bank of America and his wife's retirement fund from employment in Texas, and it totals between $15,000 and the $65,000. Yeah, so all right, let's get into a couple of weird parts. He just paid it off, um, so is that why he's down to 15 to 65? Did he? You know, if it was up to 200, did he have 265 and he just paid off? Where did he get all that money to pay off the credit card debt? That's the smallest part of the story. Maybe he just had accumulated it and paid it back. It could be totally normal. All right, it's weird that they're voluntarily reporting this. I know that they have to have it out anyway, so they maybe they're just getting out ahead of the story. And maybe that's, and when you get out ahead of a story, you wanna emphasize the thing that's most positive to you. So they are emphasizing, look at how little money he has. You see how he's an average guy. Now, he's not an average guy, his family was well established in Washington DC, went to one of the best private schools in Washington DC, went to Yale, Yale Law School. And nothing wrong with that, but he's not a regular schmo and he worked for Republican politicians for a long time. And so he is deeply anti, he's deeply pro-establishment. In fact, a Fox News on-air personality called him out for that and said he is the swamp, he is the establishment. So don't get uh, tricked into like, oh, poor guy coming from a middle class background, etc. No, I mean, he was he was already uh, working in law uh, when Bill Clinton was facing impeachment. Uh, he was working with Ken Starr at the time. Yeah, so, so but the weirdest part of the story is um, how much money he spent on baseball tickets. That's super weird, I mean, you're gonna, grow, uh, accrued tens of thousands of dollars in in debt because of you like to really really like to go to baseball games and and take your friends to baseball games i smell something fishy there so i i like my friends yeah. <laughs> i know i'm not going to rack up $17,000 in debt taking guys to the ball game that's insanity or 37,000 or 57,000 the only way that you rack up that kind of debt taking people to the ball game is if it has some business implications right so i'd like to see who his so-called friends are that he took to those baseball games and he paid off his debt i mean everything was paid off by 2017 and remember we've reported on how 
you know, the retiring Supreme Court justice has had lengthy ties with Donald Trump and his family. I mean, I'm sure that these types of conversations regarding who would replace him took place last year. And so I don't know. Look, this is this is speculation on my part, so I want to be fair and honest about that. But it is these numbers do seem weird, especially considering how long um, he's been a judge, and and when you compare that to how much other judges uh, had, you know, in assets by the time that they were uh, nominated as Supreme Court justices. But I, I want you guys to understand when we say something is speculation, we're trying to be clear that hey, here, look, we know the facts about the credit card debt, etc., and then here's our analysis of it. But that analysis is from a lot of experience in covering politics. So the White House does not, in any White House, does not volunteer bad information about a Supreme Court nominee because they just wanted to be honest with the American people. They're like, oh, by the way, you're probably not gonna catch this, but let me tell you some damaging information. No, that means likely there was a more significant story that was about to come out about that. Issue, right? Yes, right? yes. And that's normally how politics works. So we're gonna get out ahead of the story, right? So I don't know if there's more damaging stuff coming, but I know that spending tens of thousands of dollars for baseball seat, baseball tickets for your so called friends is not normal. This guy is a political operative his whole life before becoming a judge, worked with Karl Rove, worked on with Jeb Bush, George Bush, mm-hmm. and and the list it can star and the list goes on and political operatives take people to the ball game for political reasons and business reasons it's not like he's just taking the guys out to the game nonstop so just understand that that spin is likely to be enormous nonsense and i'd like to know what the reality of who he took to the games and why two easy ways to follow the young turks one is hit the subscribe button down below uh, then you're a tyt subscriber and second is ring the bell And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.